Hey, JNM here, and today I want to show you how to bring a low poly and a high poly mesh from Blender to Substance Painter and add a stylized wood material. The first thing I do is to UV unwrap this mesh. This is the retopo mesh of the X handle that we sculpted. I hide the high poly mesh now, and then I will select the edges to mark the UV seams for UV unwrapping. First I set the shading to smooth. Then go to edit mode again and be sure to have edge selection enabled. Then I select the first edge, this one. Then press the control key and select this edge. Now press control and the E key and choose mark seam. The marked seam is displayed in a red color now. And now I'll go ahead and double click this edge loop. Again mark it as seam. And then the last edge loop here at the top of the mesh. Ok, that's it, now press the A key to select all, then press U and select unwrap. Alright, the mesh is unwrapped and we can export the low poly and the high poly mesh as FBX. First the high poly, the sculpted handle, select it and go to file export FBX. And I already showed this a couple of times, selected objects only, the mesh. We don't have to bake animations. And now I export as handle HP for high poly. The option apply modifiers is checked, but it's not needed for the high poly. But it's important when we export the low poly. The processing takes a while when exporting a high poly mesh. And when this is completed, I do the same for the retopo mesh. First select it, go to File Export FBX and use the same settings as before. And now it's important that you have the Apply modifiers checked, so that the Shrink Wrap modifier that we added is applied, so that the exported mesh is really snapped to the high poly sculpt. I call this handle LP for low poly and that's it. Now we can open Substance Painter and start texturing. Ok, here in Substance Painter I go to File, New Project. The mesh is unwrapped so I don't choose Auto UV Unwrap. Then I select the Low Poly FBX. And that's it and we can press OK. And here it is, the Low Poly Mesh. Here you can see the geometry. And now I go ahead and bake the mesh maps. You find it under Edit, Bake, Mesh Maps. We don't need the ID map. The resolution is set to 2K. And then for baking the details, I add the high poly mesh to the high definition meshes. I increase the distance a bit, because usually I get better results with this. And I also enable some anti aliasing. And with these settings, I bake the maps. It takes a while, but I can already see that this looks pretty good. And yes, that's a really good bake. Very nice details and I don't see any artifacts, so I'm happy with that. Let's add materials. I'm going to create a stylized wood and there's not the way to do this, there are many ways. I will combine three simple materials to create a color variation and also make use of masks and generators. Let's see. So first let's add a layer, a fill layer, and the color is set to a brown tone, a darker brown. And in the end you will see this color in the cavities. This is why I set it to a darker tone. Not too dark, don't overdo it. But anyway, it depends on your liking, it's a matter of taste but I prefer to not make it too dark. Ok, that's nice, you can play around with the roughness. I don't want to have it fully rough, but again, it's up to you. I keep it like that and then I duplicate this layer. You can right click and choose duplicate, or you press Ctrl and D. And for the base color of this layer, I choose a lighter brown tone. Ok, something like that. 
and then I add a black mask. Then it is hidden, but then I go ahead and add a generator. And for the generator, I use the mask editor. And this is very powerful, let's see. Okay, it's already masking the cavities. And now you can play around with the global blur, balance and contrast. But to increase the effect, I set the curvature to 1. And with this I get the color variation, this stylized effect that I was going for. And again I can change the global settings. And I like it that I can play nicely with the transitions between the colors. Okay, looks great already, but again I go ahead and duplicate the layer and move it to the top of the layer stack. This one I will use for the finer details of the curvature. So I set it to a lighter color as the second one and again add a black mask and a generator with a mask editor. Well, I also could have copied the second layer anyway. For this I use very low values for blur and contrast, but again set the curvature to 1. Ok, now this is too thick, so I decrease the balance. And this gives us this nice tiny details at the borders at the curvature. Ok, but play around with the settings till you have a result that you like. And then we can add some post-processing here in Substance Painter to make the material really pop. Increase the opacity of the environment. Also enable some shadows. Some glare, a vignette. I really like the post-processing of Substance Painter. So I'm really happy with it. Here is the final result and the next step will be to do the same for the other parts of the X model and then export it to Blender or a game engine. Let me know if you want to see these steps. Perhaps you're more interested in exporting to Unreal or Unity or to Blender. Let me know. If you liked the video guys, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, support me by being my patron, this would be great. And I'll see you in the next one here on JNM.